this episode of the Bid Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, as per usual, a big thank you to everyone that watched, uh, commented and liked uh, the last episode of the show, and uh, a big thank you to everybody that, uh, that that made a purchase based upon it, uh, or based upon my my reviews. Um, that that is very very much appreciated, um, given the, uh, the the current sort of situation we find ourselves in. Um, yeah, that's I'd just like to say a, a big big thank you. Um, this week's episode of the show is again, well, sort of a hard sell again, uh, like last week. Um, I'm looking at the new releases or relatively new releases from uh, Morrison Mackay in the Carnmore range, the Strictly Limited and Celebration of the Cask. I've also got a couple of samples of the uh, their Old Perth Vatted Malt that they, they produce, so uh, I thought that would sort of round out the show quite nicely. So um, so yeah, hopefully you guys will will, will think, well, one of those sounds really interesting, uh, I bet, better get myself a bottle. So I haven't ordered any of these yet so uh, obviously you know if any do take your fancy drop me a, a, an email to uh, to chris at gauntleys.com and uh, obviously you know, I'll put you on the on the list for one anyway so um, yeah not really a great deal to say about Morrison and McKay. I've been dealing with them for quite some time now and uh, you know like all independent bottling companies they've they've released some some really intriguing stuff um i mean as you remember you know i sourced my uh, my Kalila from uh, morrison mckay so you know they are sourcing some really great casks doing some really interesting stuff and um yeah i'm more than happy to sort of carry on uh, stocking their range so like I said, not really a great deal to say, so let's uh, let's just crack on and have a look at uh, what we'll be tasting today. Okay, so first bottling we'll be looking at is um, the uh, Strictly Limited uh, Linkwood. It is an eight-year-old. It was distilled in uh, 2011, obviously bottled this year, at 47.5%. Now, it's quite interesting because the, the Strictly Limited range used to be 46 they were all fine and now suddenly they're 47.5 interesting I guess they're just trying to be a little bit different I suppose anyway um, what is quite interesting about this particular Linkwood is as you know with the Strictly Limited range they are vatting of a number of casks anywhere between two and probably four or five I think um, and uh, so this is basically uh, vatting of first fill bourbon and uh, X rye barrels so hmm, interesting uh, the next bottling we're looking at is the first of the two celebration of the cask bottlings. This is a 23-year-old uh, Tommin tool, uh, distilled in November of 1996, bottled in January of this year. Uh, it's a single cask bottling, cask number 103, and bottled at 49.7%. Uh, then we're going to move on to a bit of sherry. Why not? It's a nice balanced episode of the show. As you know, I like my balance. So we have American oak, we have sherry, and we have some peat. So, yeah, all nice and harmonious. So this is the Strictly Limited Glen Talkers. Uh, it is a, or has been matured in X sherry punctions. Um, it was uh, distilled in 2010, bottled in this year, uh, and uh, is a nine-year-old, and again, like the previous uh, Strictly Limited bottling, bottled at 47.5. Then we're going to move on to the first of the two uh, Old Perths. Now, these are, like I said, vatted malts in the old terminology, or blended Scotch malt whiskey in the current terminology uh, and um, now I, this is batch number five now I don't know the exact makeup of it but uh, batch number four was five year old Glen Farkless that was teaspooned with uh, Inchgower so uh, although it could well be the same and maybe we'll find out um, that's the nice thing about uh, uh, the old Perth range is that they release, you know, batches, and yes, they the makeup can be 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 quite different from batch to batch. So, um, although they don't oh, don't say on the the labelling or anything like that what the batch actually is, and uh, they haven't told me exactly what's in this one um, because they like to keep these things a secret. But you know, these yeah. You know, anyway, we'll we'll find out, and they're really really good value for money. I think, and and you know, we're all we're all sort of like a bit. <laughs> you know um 
looking for good value these days and so you know the old Perth what, uh, they retail for uh, on online anyway for 30 pounds and 29p um, and um, so yeah we, we, we shall see what uh, the sherry batch is like uh, then we're going to move on to the uh, old Perth peated batch number four uh, now I do know what this is uh, contains and I, I the, the earlier batches I remember of what well I think it was number one or could have been number two I forget which one it was now I wasn't quite so keen on um, and batch four is completely different a completely different makeup it's comprised of Kalila Ardmore, Croftenga and Bunnerhaben, um, no, no, I'm just going to murder the pronunciation of this, Staosha, I think is the pronunciation, anyway it's there, the peated malt that they produce, so uh, bottled at 43% and like uh, like the uh, other bottling of Old Perth it retails for £30.29. The last bottling we'll be looking at today is the uh, celebration of the cask of Bunnerhaben peated, now they don't call it um, Doisha, um, not entirely certain why, but it's just Peter Bunnerhaben. Okay, uh, it is 15 years old. It was uh, distilled in December of 2004, bottled in January of this year at 53.8 percent, and it's a single sherry butt, um, 3718. So, yeah. Could be interesting. Like I said, nice balanced episode of the show. American oak, sherry, peat, you know, what's not. <laughs> Okay, so let's kick off with the liquid. Let's see what the nose gives on this end, shall we? Oh, now that's a real fruity liquid. Now, I mean, now liquid is renowned for being, you know, quite a fruity malt. You know, it has a, a lovely body to it. It's the sort of stuff that you know the blenders absolutely kill for because you know it's got it's got weight, it's got depth, um, and it certainly seems like that the the American oak has kind of drawn out the esteriness of it, uh, and it really is bananary, pineapple, apricot, pear, lovely creamy oak. There's a grippy sort of spicy note from the rye barrels as well. Um, £46.88, absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. This is this is the sort of whiskey that ticks all my boxes. You know, I love fruity whiskies. I love sort of exuberant um, fruity estuary whiskies and it's not it's not gone too far. I mean sometimes the esters can come over a little confected. I mean I tend to use the term bubble gummy because it always reminds me of bubble gum and it's I think the sort of the 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 oak is kind of although like I said seems to have emphasized the esteriness it's also added um, enough tannin um, and grip to kind of just keep that all under control and and, and it's not a sort of uh, like I said it's not an overly confected but it is a lovely fruity nose so we'll pass on That real toasty oak comes through on the finish. A little bit of spicy rye as well. It's really nipping. Um, and again, it's just pretty much like the nose. It's big, it's juicy, it's fruity. Estuary, so you know, apple, pineapple. Um, and, it, and, and it just flows. It's just got a lovely progression. It kicks off with the fruit and then in comes the American oak. Um, and it's not OTT. I mean that finish is absolutely gorgeous. There's a little bit of, of vanilla, um, spicy vanilla, and but again, it's it that that oak stops it becoming an, an, an overt sort of fruit monster, um, and and adds the balance that you uh, you would want. Um, and yeah, I mean that is just an absolutely gorgeous whiskey. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the Tommy tool. So, 23 years old, single bourbon cask. Let's see what the nose gives us. A little shy, um, a little high toned, quite citric, but there's definitely some underlying vanillins, um, a little bit of 
oxidative character, um, that sort of that maturity kind of coming through, but that is, a, again, a lovely nose. It's got a, a freshness, a grassiness. It's, it's quite vibrant. Um, and um, but again, really good depth to it. Not as as not as you know estuary and fruity as say the link would, but it has a good good body to it, a good depth. There's a little bit of almost honeysuckle, um, some minerals, a bit of yeah, a little bit of little bit of oak as well. I mean, again, really harmonious, really balanced. Um, now this is obviously not cheap. Um, this is £130.35 and you know, that is absolutely delightful, really nice. Um, it's not overly mature, it's got enough maturity to sort of, I mean it's probably maybe not quite as mature as 23 would lead you to believe. Uh, certainly the cask is a little more active, um, but even so, I mean that is, that's just a lovely whiskey. So what that's like. Lovely length. Touch of honey on the finish, a little bit of. It's also got a minerally kind of slightly grassy sort of piquancy. Um, again, quite fruity, quite dense. Um, a little biscuity to kind of start off with. Some lovely apricot, some mature honey. Oak, maybe not quite so noticeable, just kind of creeping in on the mid palate. Adding a little bit of vanilla, probably adding more structure than than sort of. Um, overt vanillins, um, touch of grass, like I said, a little bit of honey, really wonderfully long. I mean, that's just a lovely malt. It's it's got a vibrancy, um, but it's got sort of a mellow edge as well, and you know, it just flows really, really well. I mean, yeah. Well, and what more do you want? I mean, that is that's a lovely whiskey. Right, okay, so let's move on to the first of the uh, the, the sherry uh, bottling. So this is the nine-year-old Glen Talkers. Let's see what uh, the nose gives us on the scent, shall we? A lot of sherry. Um, it's, it's a sort of sherry monster, if you see what I mean. Um, now, again, you know, um, Glen Talkers uh, has that sort of, to me, it has that sort of, intense minerally highlandy kind of character yes i know it's a space side whiskey um and it kind of stands up to the sherry to a certain extent you know it has that sort of intensity that that deals with the sherry and um i know that uh that, that morrison mckay have bottled some younger glen talkers which had been aged in sherry which didn't quite have the balance and it's it's yeah, I, I I can live with it. It's got a little bit of a little bit of green fruit, a little bit of a little bit of toasty vanilla as well. Um, touch of dark fruit. It's young, it, and like I said, it's got some vibrancy. It's not totally a one-dimensional sherry monster. Um, now this is fifty-one pounds thirty-five, and you know what I think. Yeah, I, I I I like it. I think I think that's not a bad sherry cask. It's not like I said. I mean, you get the Oloroso, you get the sherry, but it's not totally blasted by the sherry. Um, let's see what the outside. Feels a little bit younger, it has to be said on the palate. Um, quite malty, um, biscuity to start off with. Um, there's a little bit of woody bitterness, but again, the softness of the uh, of the sherry fruits kind of balances that up. Um, 
it's possibly not quite as balanced as the nose I mean but it's balanced enough and I'm getting a little bit of vanillins and I'm getting a little the, the, the sort of slight bitterness kind of carries on through the finish um, it's a little bit of green fruit on the aftertaste as a the, the sort of Glen talk as minerality as well I mean overall um, yeah, I, I don't think the balance is too bad. And and again, if you like your sherry whiskies, it is not a one-dimensional sherry monster. It has other things going on other than going, hmm, all I can smell is herbal oloroso. Um, so yeah, 50 quid, 51 pounds. Yeah, I, 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 I'm happy with that. Don't you understand what I try to tell you Right, okay, so let's move on to the Old Perth uh, Sherry Cask Batch Number 5. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Again, yes, the sherry is obvious. Um, it's quite soft. It's, it's a little bit of treacle. There's a little bit more sherry than um, that was showing on the, uh, the Glen Talkers. Um, there's a touch of toastiness, there's a little bit of raisin, a little bit of sultana. There's, there's some barley notes kind of coming through. Again, it's got balance. Um, it's not huge. It's not, it, it doesn't rem, remind me of, uh, of, 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 of say, um, yeah, maybe it is old, maybe it is young Glen Parkless, but it's certainly... It's certainly more balanced than uh, than say than I would expect a young Glen Parkless to be. Um, it's also softer as well. It doesn't quite have that edge. But then again, the ten-year-old Glen Parkless does. It has a softness to it, but um, it's also a bit sort of dull, really. This is um, this has got a little bit of a an edge to it. Um, a little bit of a sort of a minerality. Yeah. I mean, for thirty odd quid, yeah. You, know, you and, and again, you know, if this is the sort of thing that that ticks your boxes, so to speak. Um, um, yeah, let's see what the buzz like. Soft, juicy. Not hugely complex. Um, again, it's got there's a balance at work here. Yes, you're getting the sherry, um, the sherry dried fruits. There's a little bit of toasted raisins, a little bit of toasty oak as well. Um, a little bitterness uh, kind of coming through right on the very end. Um, it's mellow. It's it's a sort of yeah. It's not the sort of whiskey that you're going to go. Oh my god, that's incredible. But then again, you know, it, it is what it is, I suppose, at the end of the day. It is pleasant. Um, it's pleasant. It's relatively balanced. Um, it's 30-odd quid, you know, and you could you could do a lot worse with 30-odd quid, to be to be fair. Uh, and this is the thing, you know. Um, you know, you have to kind of, to a certain extent, you know, put aside any preconceptions and, and snobbery about blended or vatted malts, as the case may be. And, you know, I've always been a big fan of, of, of these kind of whiskies because they often give you really good value for money. And, you know, for 30-odd quid, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy with, uh, with the quality of, uh, of the juice in the bottle, as they say. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, not bad. How does it feel like? Right, okay, so let's move on to the Old Perth PT. Um, like I said, I mean, I think um, the earlier bottlings, or certainly bottling number one or two, uh, had, um, I can't remember what it was now, but there was certainly some leche in it, and it was a bit, a bit rough and ready, shall we say. So uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this. That's a nice nose. It's kind of, it's ashy, it's tarry. There's plenty of sweet fruit. I'm getting a lot of the Kalila character, it has to be said. Um, lightly salted. Some nice crisp uh, white fruit. A little honey. A little bit of a medicinal note. I mean, what's not to like about that? You like your peated malts. You like Kalila. Well, you know, and, and this has a lot of Kalila character. Um, there's a touch of lime. There's a... Again, it's balanced. 
you know, it is not just all about the peat. There is some, some pleasant fruit there. Um, and you know what? Again, 30 odd quid. You could do a lot worse. Um, so the pass on. Chewy, malty, plenty of sweet fruit, opens up with more of the barley and the sweet fruit. Um, the peat is only really kind of coming through on the sort of mid to late palate. Um, it's quite, again, quite ashy. There's a slight medicinal note, but, you know, nothing to get sort of too bent out of shape about. Um, it's full, it's robust, again, getting plenty of the Kalila kind of character. Um, there's a little bit of salt, a little bit of crisp of white fruit. That's really, really very, very good for 30 odd quid. That's a lovely vatting. Um, and uh, and like, uh, like I said, I'm certainly getting the Kalila. I'm certain, probably getting a little bit of the sort of slightly crisper um, sort of peated Bunnahaban. Um, the Ardmore is adding maybe a little bit of smokiness. Croftenga, I'm not getting a huge amount of it. Croftenga can be a little bit weird, um, a bit like sort of peated Ockentoshin. Um, and I'm not getting a huge amount of that. So, so, so it's not too weird is what I'm basically saying. It is a lovely peated malt, you know. Um, what more can you say? Run away, run away, run Okay, so uh, let's uh, finish off with uh, the uh, peated Bunnahaban. So, uh, single sherry butt, and it's 15 years old. Let's see what the nose gives us. Oh, that's a punchy nose. Um, that slaps you in the face with um, herbal sherry and peat briquettes and seaweed and salt. Oof, that, I mean, that's got some intensity, it has to be said. Um... It's a little bit of honey underneath, a little bit of fruit, white chocolate, a little bit of coffee. Slightly more medicinal than I would expect uh, Bunnahaban to be, it has to be said. Um, oh, but that, the intensity of that is absolutely stunning. Now this is quite expensive, well, relatively speaking, it's £164.59, um, but you know what? I think that's damn worth it. I, I love this nose. It again, it's balanced. It's not not overly sherry. I mean, it's not certainly doesn't come across to me as as first fill uh, sherry. I would I would guess second or maybe even third fill possibly. Uh, I mean, there's still a good deal of sherry character there, but again, there are other things at play. Uh, you know, like I said, it has the peak. There's, almost, there's a little bit of fruit, almost a little bit of fruit. There is a little bit of fruit, honest. Um, oh, it's getting a bit stinky now, a bit of manure as well. Mm. Oh, I like this nose. This is a lovely nose. Um, oh, yeah, that is getting very, very manure now as you leave it in the glass. Um, let's see what the bad side. Again, really good intensity. Lightly oiled, briny, quite fruity to start off with. Again, you're getting sort of the um, apricot and barley and then the, the herbal um, oloroso coming through on the mid palate. Then you get the bog myrtle, the sort of um, gritty, earthy kind of peat. There's a little bit of seaweed, a little bit of a medicinal note as well. Um, vibrant, windswept coastal intense I mean that is really intense but not too intense it's not sort of like you know sort of grabbing you by the, the you know the short and curlies um, but it is it's got plenty of intensity it's got a, a lovely character um, I put a little drop of water with it I don't really think it actually needs any water to be fair even though it's you know 50 odd percent 50 
3.8. Um, I just think that just adds to the sort of the vibrancy. Um, it certainly brought out the oak, the well, the vanillins, shall we say. It's not brought out the sherry. The sherry has kind of regressed a little bit. I'm getting certainly more of the vanilla character. Um, and again, like with a lot of peated malts, the, the, the peat intensity is suppressed a little bit, but it's quite herbal. And and, and that's the, the peat is a, maybe a little bit sweeter as well. Um, that's what it passes like that. A little maltier, a little bit more herbal. Um, again, the peat feels a little sweeter, um, and it's it's got a reasonable length. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I really don't think it needs any water. Um, it's got a. It's maybe emphasised a little bit more of the the wood spices on on the aftertaste. Um, Personally, I prefer that neat. I think I, I like the vibrancy and the intensity of it uh, at its natural strength. But you know, it, either way, I, I think it sort of works. And um, that is a great whiskey to finish. <laughs>